Hi guys, this is Chesa Jun Ramirez and today we are going to talk about the current problems the Philippines is facing as of today. Number 1. Corruption from the national government down to the local, provincial, and city governments, corruption has been rampant among the officials. Imagine how many politicians are there in the country and how many of them are corrupt. We cannot guarantee, right? It is rare to find a public official whose pure aim is to serve the country. Many of them just run for the position to gain its benefits like the power, the influence, and the money. Even the highest position in the country is liable for corruption. Ever remember Ferdinand Marcos? Even former presidents have plunder cases, yet they don't get condemned for their guilty actions. They re even get re-elected for, for lower positions like mayors and congressmen. This just proves that corruption is a huge problem here in the Philippines and the first that we need to solve if we ever want our country to improve. Number 2. Education Education in the Philippines is expensive, though not all. This is especially since the implementation of the K-12 curriculum, which adds two more years into high school, thus increasing the financial expenditure of the common Filipino family. Also, most companies, though not all, hire and interview applicants from prestigious schools. Then the children from rural and remote areas hardly get any proper education. What's worse is that the teachers themselves become lazy enough to do their job, which results to even lazier students. Students get rarely encouraged to perform well in school. Why? Because of the lack of school buildings and classrooms, poor laboratories, shortage of apparatuses and equipment, outdated books, and the lack of teachers that are capable to cater them. Then why is there a lack in the te of teachers capable of teaching these students? The answer is corruption. What is the role of corruption here? Due to the corruption within the Department of Education, teachers don't get the benefits that they deserve. Even more, their salary is too small to support them and their families, which is why education should be, should be one of the main focus of our government. Why? This is to help the children in remote areas get better jobs to support their parents and their communities. Also, this is to lessen the kids roaming around the streets naked with a bag of solvent ready to sniff any time. Also, so that these kids can have a bright future instead of becoming drug addicts. Also, so that the next generation can have a bright future and then the cycle goes on and on and on. Solving this problem would surely improve the education system in the country and then help our country rise to the top. Number 3. Crab Mentality Crab Mentality is the kind of mentality we Filipinos have developed and have been passed from generation to generation, starting from the Spanish regime up to present time. We developed this mentality during the Spanish period when Spaniards used to have favorites among their servants. At being a favorite, one tends to have an influence over the boss, thus other people have a disadvantage. Filipinos tend to get jealous of their neighbors when they become successful than them. This leads to a continuous sequence of sucking up to the higher ups and backbiting among each other to bring your opponent down. This type of mentality could actually be our downfall. Number 4 the lack of opportunities and unemployment. Ever know the reason why we have so many overseas Filipino workers all around the world? The answer is simple. It is the lack of job opportunities he here in our own country. This is what pushes them to seek jobs in other countries even if they are at risk of being manipulated, violated, molested, raped, or even worse, killed. But why do most Filipinos still go abroad despite of the consequences of doing so? This is because of the promises of much higher pay and a chance to make their lives and their families' lives better. 
It is quite sad to think that other countries get to experience the fruits of the labor of the people who have honed their talents in our country and to reap the benefits of their skills. The one thing I could I could think that would really so solve this problem is to increase the job opportunities here and to also increase the salary of the workers, since those are the reasons why they go out of their country to work. If this solution is implemented successfully by the government, then the Philippines will no longer be a third world country. Number 5. Transportation and Metro Rail System if there is one thing the Philippines is very infamous of, it is our world-class traffic. Our country holds one of the top places of the countries with the heaviest traffic all around the world. Philippine roads are jam-packed with cars, jeepneys, and buses. Add some trucks and motorcycles into the mix and you get a travel time period of almost an hour. A prime example of this would be the Epifanio de los Santos Avenue or EDSA which is the longest road here in the Philippines. Another transportation problem is the old LRT or light rail transit system and the MRT or the metro rail transit system. These trains are always on the news due, the, due to them constantly malfunctioning and stopping even before they reach the next station. The railway transit was created in order to ameliorate the traffic congestion in Metro Manila, but instead of doing its job, it added more problems to the government with the civilians being affected more due to them being late to work. The question is, why is the government still not doing anything they can to solve the problem? This leads us back to, question, uh, to problem number one, corruption. Again, yes, corruption. Officials within the Department of Transportation are said to be doing everything they can to solve these problems. However, it is already 2018 and we still don't see any improvement. The money that was supposed to be used in order to repair the trains are clearly being dropped into the pockets of the corrupt officials and they are just giving us all these kinds of excuses like that one about an unqualified train manufacturer to cover up their actions on TV. However, there is still hope. I recently saw a news on TV regarding the DOST in inventing our very own hybrid electric train. Like wow, an electric train! It is also eco-friendly and Philippine-made. This means that we are now able to build trains of our own and lessen our expenses by using our own materials and products. No more buying from other countries, and we can also make a market out of these. Number 6. Infrastructure These are one of the projects of the government that is poorly supervised and underfunded. The roads in the provinces can't even withstand a 10-wheeler truck and several buses for a month. And with the Philippines notorious for experiencing heavy rains, especially during the rainy season, even newly cemented roads get potholes after a few months. This is seriously one of the problems that needs to be solved since it can affect our country's economy. The prices of basic goods and necessities increase when the trucks that carry these products spend a longer journey in delivering. This is caused by poorly built roads and bridges. And the reason why we have poorly built roads and r bridges is... Drumroll, please. Dun, da, da, da. Problem number one. Corruption. Public officials in the national and local governments use the money for infrastructure projects for their own interests. And in order to cover up their actions, they build roads and bridges with substandard materials. Thus, we have roads that easily get potholes and bridges that can't hold the weight of a single heavy truck. I even remember many years ago during the end of the term of former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo where they revealed that they built roads and bridges that lead to nowhere and are useless to our country. Like seriously, what is wrong with our government? They are seriously wasting money instead of using this for better projects like our improving our education system. Like, oh my god, I don't know why they are so stupid. 
Well, it's all in the past, and all we can do is do better in the future. So, I just hope that President Rodrigo Duterte would actually do his job and fulfill his promises of improving our country's situation. So guys, that is some of the current problems that the Philippines is currently facing as of today, and I hope that you share the same opinion as I have. And let me know at the comments down below. See you! Thank <laughs> you.